हेलो एवरीबॉडी ए वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू इट इज माय एम एंड प्लेजर टू टॉक अबाउट बायोडाइवर्सिटी टुडे एंड माय टॉपिक इज स्पेशली बेस्ड अपॉन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लिविंग टॉपिक इज स्पेशली बेस्ड अपॉन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गन्स आई आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्क्राइब अबाउट द किंगडम सिस्टम व्हिच इज नेसेसरी फॉर प्लस 2 as well as the degree students as all we know there are in present time there are about 3 million types of living organism there are 3 million types of living organism which have been scientifically included in the taxonomic system and it has been found that by 2010 there are about 16 there are about 1.7 million types of organisms included within the taxonomic system in recent time every year on an average of 1800 living organisms officially included to this number for anom there is a great diversity in the bio geographical condition of the environment it is also found that different organisms distributed to different geographical region also shows variation if we consider the living organisms it is found that the organism which is the most smallest individual is about 20 to 150 nm it is called as nanov it is about 1/10th of smallest bacteria 1/10th of smallest bacteria and the largest organism is a mammal that is blue whale that is blue whale it is about 25 to 30 meters in length we can see there is a great variation in geographical condition along with living organisms so that the present day systems in analyzing biodiversity two scientific terms have to remember systematics one is systematics so what do mean by systematics the systematic process deals with identification and relationship identification and relationship it was first described by the term systematic first described by carlos linnaeus after that the systematics have been modified through taxonomy what is taxonomy it is a very much precise process which was first introduced in 1813 by d candoli d candol d candoli it deals with identification identification then followed by naming followed by classify identification naming and classification it deals with taxonomy it the basic difference between systematic and taxonomy let us to enter into the need for taxonomy or need for classification if we analyze the systematic or taxonomy the first need is the division of larger group into smaller units so that it became easier for knowing about all the organisms in detail the second one is knowledge of affinity we can uh, 
identify an organism and place it into a definite position of animal kingdom by this aspect knowledge of evolution we can know its past history and present position in the living world it describe connecting link what is a connecting link the connecting link describe the evolution of a advanced organism from a primitive one it has been described through taxonomy it help in knowing about adaptation and it also help in knowing the phylogeny these are the basic needs for classifying living organism into smaller groups this is the need of classification the system of classification was first introduced by aristotle who is also known as the father of classification aristotle described the living kingdom into two groups one is anima the second one is anema what the difference between anima and anema the anema consists of mainly invertebrates these are classified on the basis of organism or the anima are without red blood and the anema consists of organisms having red blood these are red blooded organisms these are the anema consists of vertebrates vertebrates the anima consists of different type of invertebrates invertebrates these are vertebrates the anima is again divided into five classes these are spawns then the next one is insecta the next one is crustacea mollusca and cephalopoda which have been modified in present day system to produce different phylums and the enlarged classification is placed on it the anima consist of two groups one is ov virus here egg laying animals the second one is vp virus these are giving birth to young ones this is the detailed classification given by aristotle after aristotle carolus linnaeus divide the living organism into two groups one is planta it consist of all plants and the second group is animalia it consist of all animals the system is called as two kingdom system because it divide the organism into two groups it is based upon photosynthesis and locomotion the individuals in planta have the ability of photosynthesis these have photosynthetic ability and the second one have locomotion these organism do not have the ability of locomotion but animalia do not have the ability of photosynthesis this two kingdom system suffers a large drawback what were the drawbacks it cannot classify it cannot divide unicellular from multicellular all plant means unicellular and multicellular are present in planta unicellular and multicellular are also present in animalia unicellular and multicellular are in a single group the second one is suppose we will take the example of euglena this is one of the organism it has chloroplast it have the ability to synthesize its food and it has the ability of locomotion if the organism have the ability of photosynthesis it is under planta when it is it have the ability of locomotion it is under animalia but it shows dual feature it cannot be these are contradictions so two kingdom system has not been accepted it is replaced by three kingdom system 
After two kingdoms, the three kingdom system was given by Ernst Haeckel. Haeckel divided the living organism into two groups, protista, planta and animalia. Protista consists of all unicellulars. Hence, planta consists of multicellular plant, multicellular plants. Animalia consists of multicellular animals, multicellular animals. But the unicellular organisms are of two types. Some of the unicellular organisms, those do not have a true nucleus. These are called as prokaryotes. Prokaryotes, these are eukaryotes. There is also another group having also nucleus. They are called as mesokaryotes. The mesokaryotes are equivalent to eukaryotes. The only difference is that the mesokaryotes do not have S, mean, they have acidic histone. The histones are not positively charged like eukaryotes. So these pro and eukaryotes should be separated. But here prokaryotes and eukaryotes in one group. So it should be separated. After Haeckel, the four kingdom system was given by H.F. Copeland. Divide the living organism into four groups. These are unicellular, the prokaryotes are taken in monera, prokaryotes. These are eukaryotes and the rest two are similar as usual. But there is a demerit. The planta consists of both autotrophic and heterotrophic which should be separated. It has been corrected in the five kingdom system. The five kingdom system was given by R. H. Whitaker. The new kingdom is fungi. Let us say it consists of heterotrophic. Man, the plants those do not have chlorophyll for synthesis their food. It consists of prokaryote, it consists of eukaryote. These are heterotrophic plants. These are heterotrophs, planta, autotrophic plants and animalia. It is the five kingdom system. The five kingdom system has a number of demerits. Then what are the demerits? Monera and Protista are still these are heterogeneous. Still these are heterogeneous. It consists of different group of organism. The second is the phylogeny of lower group of organisms has not been described. Phylogeny has not been has not been described clearly not been described clearly the virus is not included in the system virus is not included it cannot describe the microbes completely microbes classification are incomplete so five kingdom system has been replaced by another six kingdom system the six kingdom system was given by carl oz he divided the monera into these two groups monera has been divided into archibacteria and eubacteria hence it is a six kingdom system and all the rest four are similar as usual after six kingdom system it was still heterogeneous so in 1981 seven kingdom system has been described it was described by thomas cavalier smith the seven kingdom system here it was given by thomas cavalier smith system cavalier and smith they combinedly also described the eight kingdom system the first two are similar 
the chromista is newly introduced in seven system what are chromista it consists of both unicellular and multicellular organism having similarities in the plastid having similar plastid out of the seven kingdoms the organism with similar plastid are under chromista then protista fungi planta and animalia are as usual it is similar to the above systems after it the eight kingdom system has been given by both cavalier cavalier and smith according to eight kingdom system prior to eubacteria here another system is another group added called as archaea archaea this is the first second this is the third four five six seven eight there are eight kingdoms which is the latest system of this classification the archaea consist of primitive protista which lack mitochondria do not have mitochondria all the protista have mitochondria but it do not have mitochondria so it is separated from it it is all about the kingdom system classification thank you all i will come with the next video